Okay, so let's go to the next tool integrated in the CodeSys Professional Developer Edition. It's CodeSys UML. Now, what is UML? Why should you use it? UML is in fact an abbreviation for Unified Modeling Language, which is a graphical language for the specification, illustration, design, and documentation of object-oriented systems. Okay, I can imagine that some of you say, doesn't bother me because I'm not working with object-oriented systems. However, wait a minute, and um, perhaps could be interesting for you too. In fact, in this UML, there are 14 different graphical languages defined for modeling analysis or for executable models. And out of these 40 different types of diagrams, they, or, or these, these 14 different types of diagrams can help to, to, uh, real, um, to be used as uh, intermediate language because all engineering disciplines, no matter if this is mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, or software engineering, they somehow get used to these modeling languages. And therefore, this is perfect for description of workflows, processes, sequences, and can act as such an interdisciplinary language for different users and simplifies thus the communication between these users. Now, how is it integrated in CodeSys? Out of these 14 languages, we have just cho chosen the two ones who, who are most uh, effective, uh, the class diagram and the state chart. And they are now added to the set of IC61131 editors, which you know. Yeah, and now we take a closer look to all these languages or all these editors, starting with class diagram, which describes a structure, not the behavior, and displays different relationships. For that purpose, again, I switch to my development system where I can now insert a class diagram. How can I do that? I click on the application, right mouse click on it and add an object. And can you hear add now <coughs> UML class diagram? There I have two options. I can give another object name and I can now import the project structure to the class diagram. I will do that and immediately I get an overview of all the objects here and about their relationships. For example, the PLC PRG uses several user-defined uh, structures or I see that this simulation um, has some, uses some, some function blocks, calls some function blocks. I can even um, open these um, declaration parts directly here in that editor in order to see uh, which values, which variables are declared here. So I get a nice graphical overview of my structure. I could even add some more interfaces or classes just by putting them from the toolbox inside. So for example, start a new PRU program, edit, and you will immediately see that this is added here in my project tree too. So I just delete it once again. Then I'm asked whether it's just deleted from the diagram or from the project and diagram. Yeah, you will see whoop, it disappeared on both sides. So this is one possibility to get an overview of your project structure, a complete overview on the whole structure, but you can as well have class diagrams just for single parts, for example, I take that simulation here once again and um, copy in there some methods which are called by that. And then I get a nice overview just for that certain part here. Helps you to structure the software, perhaps to give the idea of the application to any other user who is not familiar with the code that you've programmed. And especially for object oriented programming, it's a huge and uh, really effective help. 
delete them out again. Go back to the slideshow. Yeah, you've seen that they can be generated from the PU tree and from the de declaration part of the PUs, and that the changes are automatically updated in the PU tree and vice versa. So it's an alternative graphical project view. Let's go to the state chart. In fact, the state chart is a new graphical language for states and transitions. Now, those of you who are familiar with all the languages within the CODIS development system or within the IC61131, you may notice that these terms states and transitions are perhaps familiar because it's something similar like sequential function chart. So we have as well a state start state, which is an SFC and init step. We have states, which are steps in the sequential function uh, start, um, chart with entry, do, and exit actions. We have transitions, we have decision points, forks for parallel executions, same execution time of generated code. But there are some additional features. First step, there are intracycle states and transitions possible, and you can group together states as so-called compositions, and you can even have error transitions. And in order to show you that, switch again to codes. In this case, I have already such a state chart prepared for you. It's in fact um, a very simple example. It's a kind of coffee machine. And um, you see here, there's the start state. And we're going there to a power off state and with a variable power up, we go to the init state and immediately to the idle state. And then we're waiting whether um, variable shutdown or be make coffee are activated in order then to start this composite state for the coffee production. And in order to show you that in a live mode, I log into my CODIS development system. You see that I'm logged in to my company network here in the German headquarter of the Kultus group. And therefore there are multiple of such PLCs available. And I download and um, compile the application and then we can see it in a live way. And you can imagine having such a state chart. This is a good base for a discussion between a mechanical engineer who knows the process of a machine, for example, the, the workflow, and you as a program. And instead of just drawing it on a paper, you can immediately draw it in CODESYS. And the best thing is that CODESYS directly generates code out of it. So it's, it's an editor-like sequential function chart. And if we start that, then we see that immediately here from the start state, there was the transition made to power off. And as soon as I activate manually all these variables here, we will have that application running. So we start with power up, uh, run through until we're in idle mode and can either wait for a shutdown or for make coffee. Of course, we want to make coffee. Hopefully you have your coffee cup next to you. And we see that we're running through this coffee production process. Uh, I've really pimped up my coffee machine, therefore it was really quick. <laughs> Uh, however, you've seen that all the states were run through and we are back in idle mode right now. And this is something where you can perfectly discuss with a mechanical or an electrical engineer, define the process and then realize directly inside such a UML state chart. Okay, so coming back to the presentation, uh, we've seen that it's animated in uh, online mode. Such a UML tool can help you in order to structure your application or in order to commu communicate with other players at the machine. Therefore, it's quite useful in case you want to use it. 